we are gathered here in the lofty mountains of Aspen to work together to chart our future. Yet before we can do that, we must understand who we are, where we are, and what has gotten us to this place. So fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the ride as we help retrace our journey and identify the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Given the wide array of industries in which we participate and the diversity of equipment and solutions we produce, the number of people we have an opportunity to impact with our products and our work is huge. Did you know that Pneumatic Scale is making the capsules that will be used in the new Kerrig cold system so that you can make your own Coca-Cola at home? Coke invested almost $2 billion, that's billion with a B, in Green Mountain Coffee to support this new product. Pneumatic Scale has already completed the first two filling machines to manufacture this product with many more likely to come. And this project has yielded several new opportunities for the design group including site engineering support, a possible turnkey process project, and packaging project management efforts in two different Green Mountain plants. Although there are a lot of Americans in this room, we touch the lives of people throughout the world with our products. I wonder how many of you can name the top 10 countries into which we sold in 2013. Can you name the next 10? Which country was just edged out of the top 20? Who are we? We are almost 8,000 people in more than 20 countries speaking dozens of languages. We are engineers, craftsmen, technicians, steelworking artists, sales executives, and great listeners, and much, much more. How do we compare to other organizations? So as impressive as this snapshot of the company is in isolation, it becomes even more impressive when you compare ourselves to other organizations than we might consider peers. As you can see, the growth in our share price is impressively steady, helped in part by the fact that while our share price is impacted by the dynamics of the economy and by the cost of capital, we're not vulnerable to the whims of the public market. Having patient capital in the form of investors who demand performance over time certainly helps support our culture of doing the right thing for the long-term health of our team and our business. What about the stuff that is harder to measure? We're also a team of people who are deeply committed to the guiding principles of leadership, and we have developed a culture that is powerful and unique. Where other organizations struggle mightily to preserve cultures as they grow, even organically, we have a strikingly common culture across widely dispersed, highly autonomous organizations knit together through 70 acquisitions. Indeed, the business model of Barry Waymiller, with its entrepreneurial collaboration, is in many ways the embodiment of the responsible freedom that we know is so important to our associates. And of course, the fact that our business model is unique and noteworthy is clear from the high praise and recognition we have started to receive from around the world. He said humility is being open to the ideas of others. And what I met was a company filled with humility, a company where every single person shows up and is genuinely interested in the ideas of others, no matter what they do in the company. It is remarkable. In fact, the only reason I find myself here now is because I met a remarkable man who said, I'm open to your ideas. And he came to me. And we had lunch, the famous three-hour lunch that was supposed to be a one-hour lunch. And we shared this idea of the, of the world together. And as I said to Bob, you know, you had me at huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, we have this company. And I said, prove it. I want to see it. And this is why we came on this trip, just to see what it was about. And we made very specific requests. No hubbub, no tool, you know, no sort of purpose-built tours, just let us, just show us people, let us interact, don't prepare, no PowerPoints, just let us roam. I want it to be real, not artificial or superficial. And I stand, profound, you stand before you profoundly moved. 
this world that I imagine is 100% possible. And I think if I were to think about uh, the things that really stood out for me, I think above all it would be about human dignity and respect. That this is about uh, treating people as whole human beings, treating them with love and care, and really restoring their sense of um, uh, dignity and hope for the future. Wow, pretty impressive stuff. But before we all take a bow and go home, let's take just a minute to understand how we got here, to understand what has allowed us to achieve these results. Shouldn't we pause and reflect on the lessons our experience has provided before we chart the course to take our associates into the future? Well, as you know, it wasn't always an easy journey. We enjoyed some amazing highs. And then we took our business model out and tested it in some of the roughest terrain imaginable. But all of our speed bumps and breakdowns led us to become the company that we are today. How have we done it? Why were we able to emerge from a volatile past into a sustained period of growth and viability as a company? The fundamental secrets to our success are fourfold. First, being able to learn from our experience. Second, getting the fundamentals right. Third, creating an environment where people can flourish. And fourth, developing and leveraging new competencies. That's it? Just four? Yep. But it sounds easier than it is. So let me share what I mean by that. Learning from our experience means learning from what went well and what did not go so well, and applying those lessons to our business. So in those painful early days, what did not go well was a pretty long list. At the top of the list, unfocused growth, spreading ourselves too thin, going beyond our competencies, getting into anything and everything that looked interesting, and overextending ourselves in the process. Maybe we even believed our own press sometimes that said we had the Midas touch. Other items on the list might include taking our bankers for granted, taking our historic customers for granted, relying so heavily on one industry. So, learning from our experiences, good and bad, we decided to focus on the fundamentals that we put in place. These include achieving principled results on purpose, knowing where you want to go making sure you have a healthy balance of customers and industries, making sure you have a balance of product lines, tapping the aftermarket opportunity to minimize the volatility in the business, relentlessly focusing on cash, building deep relationships with bankers when you do not need them, figuring out how to buy and add value to companies, making sure you grow organically as well as through acquisition. And not getting emotional about a deal, remaining disciplined about the price you will pay. In order to ensure that our people flourish, we needed to understand what that means and deliberately and purposefully build that into our capabilities as well. And we did. We got a team of people together to create the guiding principles of leadership. Then we listened to them when they suggested we needed to do more than simply put them on the wall. And thus the GPL SSR program was born. We got really good at recognizing people for doing good. We realized that to ensure a sustainable manufacturing business, we needed to embrace lean, but to do so in a way that was consistent with our values. Fundamentally, we needed to teach our leaders to be examples of the stewardship that we recognize true leadership to be. We listened when people told us how much of a difference a respectful, participative, empowered work environment made in their lives. And we recognized that we needed to celebrate and reinforce the things in our culture that matter most to people, like responsible freedom and recognition and hospitality, and thus, was born Barry Waymiller University. Developing and leveraging new competencies. So 
we got good at learning from ourselves and from others. Not only did we create BWU, but we did book studies. We went to visit other companies that had distinguished themselves in one way or another. Bob always talks about how he learned from Chuck Knight at Emerson. But Rhonda Spencer and the Organizational Empowerment Team took it way beyond the industrial luminaries of St. Louis. Visiting Fetzer Wineries and the Dallas Cowboys and Southwest Airlines and the United States Air Force and even a boat company in Michigan. Benchmarking became a core competency. With the launch of Barry Waymiller University, leadership development became a new competency. We even got good at teaching other people, at inspiring people in other companies to come and take communication skills, to experience our culture firsthand, or to follow the truly human leadership blog. Although we always did this simply because it is the right thing to do, and people responded very positively to the initiative, we certainly have seen benefits for the company when it comes to attracting talent that shares our values. It is a whole lot easier to recruit great people when they know who you are and they come looking for you. With the constant pressure to move manufacturing to low-cost countries, we also needed to give our associates the tools to work smarter, to take control of their workflow, and be positioned to exercise responsible freedom to work even smarter. And thus began our lean journey. We spotted market opportunities as well. And in the late 1980s, we created the design group to give us some sizzle to go with our stake. Since then, Joe Wilhelm and his team have taken competency development to all new levels. Spotting market opportunities, not only around packaging line design and integration, but also related to facility design and construction, large scale project management, control systems automation, and validation services, and our sizzle is now every bit as meaty as the rest of our business. More recently, we've broadened our acquisition strategy to include European acquisitions, moving out of North America in a big way with acquisitions all over Europe. And we've even opened our minds to the French. In acquiring Arsenal in late 2013, we recognized that Barry Waymore could add value to companies that are not broken. Another important competency we've been developing is new product development. Having innovative products that meet the needs of the market is critical for our long-term success. And the last year has seen significant market acceptance of our new products, with big wins for BW Paper Systems Econ Cheater, Pneumatic Scale Angelus' V-Series Seamers, and PCMC's Forte Tissue Machine. These are big wins for our organization. But even more exciting is the way the team went about these successful product development efforts. They conducted formal market requirement events. They mapped the competitive landscape. And they understood the price value trade-off from a customer perspective. We not only developed successful products, but we also began to perfect a repeatable process to guide future product development efforts. Supplementing all of these is our other new competency area, Forsyth Capital. That this too was an example of observing our environment, learning, and developing a new competency to capitalize on the opportunity. So where are we going next? As this is the beginning of our visioning process for the year, there is no one not even our noble leader, Bob Chapman. No one who can truly say with certainty just what our future will look like. We have been hard at work updating our three-year EVA plan, and we know what that looks like. But what we don't know is what our future might hold if we were to start first with the type of company we think we can be at Barry Way Miller, and then define the steps we need to take to get there. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what if? What if we start with our guiding principle to measure success by the way we touch the lives of people? What else could we be doing to reinforce that goal? To make the safest equipment people can buy? To design the best workspaces for our own associates and for our customers? What if? What if 
we were thought of first and foremost as problem solvers. Partners able to help customers solve challenges in their businesses. What if having the pulse on customers' emerging requirements would not only inform new product development efforts of our equipment businesses, but would also inform our acquisition strategy? What if Bob Chapman becomes famous, spreading our leadership message around the world? What if that opens doors to us? What if that leads us to new places we've never imagined before? What if? This is the question we want you to ponder while you're here in this beautiful place with these wonderful people. We want you to think about not what we've done, nor where we are, but where we're going and the awesome opportunity and responsibility we have to build something even greater. What if we could have a lot of fun along the way? What if we could create a new model for a business organization? And what if we could share that vision with the world? What if?